I see two main objectives from the book. Uh, the overarching objective is to provide a resource for medical technology inventors and innovators to guide them through the innovation process. Uh, we, we believe there is a structured process that innovators can follow that will enable them to more successfully complete the journey and bring products to the market that uh, improve patient outcomes. And what we hope to achieve with the book is that it, it becomes the resource to help innovators and entrepreneurs in the medical technology space in their journey. Um, the secondary objective, we see other universities developing courses very similar to the biodesign innovation course we are teaching here at Stanford. The material in the book came out of our experience in the course, and we hope that this book will also become the standard textbook, or one of the standard textbooks, to be used in similar courses that are coming out in other universities. So there, there is the, uh, the classroom audience, students in uh, graduate programs in bioengineering, uh, in business schools and schools of medicine that are involved in interdisciplinary courses on biomedical innovation. Uh, it's going to be uh, industry executives. We are seeing uh, a lot of interest from uh, some of the major medical device manufacturers to, to be using their book and uh, providing copies of, of our book to their executives and uh, entrepreneurs more broadly. So the, but the, primarily there is a dual audience here. There is the university audience, courses, instructors, and there is the trade audience, medical device, medical technology, both large companies and small startups. Uh, the course. And uh, it's the experience of teaching the biodesign innovation course, seeing our students go through the innovation process, learning with them what works and what doesn't work, talking to uh, several of uh, the mentors who come to our class and finding out about what works and what doesn't work in medical device entrepreneurship. When we started teaching the course, there were no real teaching material we could use. And as we started developing some teaching material, testing them in the classroom, seeing how the students reacted to them, that inspired us to become more systematic in our course development, develop more organized material. And as we were using this in the classroom, getting feedback back from the students, and following this iterative process to reach eventually a set of material that worked really well in the classroom. And it was ready to be put together into a book. But the inspiration was the classroom and making sure that the classroom worked effectively for our students. One major ground that we broke here is developing this book that involved this extensive collaboration between uh, academic clinicians, clinician inventors, and business schools. Uh, I'm not aware of any other book that was co-written uh, between medical doctors uh, and business school scholars. So I'll just put that out there, demonstrating the interdisciplinary nature. Uh, I think we are providing the foundation and the framework for medical technology entrepreneurship. Uh, there are books written on entrepreneurship. There are books written on innovation. I think this is probably the first book that is written specifically on medical technology entrepreneurship how to do it, how it works, what are the steps in the process, and how to go through the steps in the process. So uh, I don't know if I could make the claim that we are defining a field, but if we would be defining a field with this book, is the field of medical technology entrepreneurship and providing the basic resources, the basic frameworks that underlie successful entrepreneurial activity in that space. Uh, in, in, in many ways. So uh, one way where Stanford has been a fertile uh, environment for this is because it all started as a course development project, we were able to leverage the resources of the case writing office. So without the support of the case writing office and of the deans in the business school, it wouldn't be possible to develop the course material. So Stanford as an institution 
help provide the resources to develop the course material that eventually made it into the book. Um, the other thing is BioX. BioX is the initiative that aimed to bring together different parts of the university to focus on problems in biomedical technology. Without BioX, we wouldn't have a home for biodesign innovation. My collaborators in the medical school would not have a home for the activities that they are doing. I would not have a home to link to in the medical school. So the case writing office from the business school, the BioX initiative across the street, Overall support both from the administration in the business school and the broader university administration on multidisciplinary work. In general, multidisciplinary work is very risky. Uh, and you want to have support from the university so that you don't have to worry about resources when you are back in a project like this. So the university has been uh, extremely supportive. Silicon Valley. I don't know what is the last estimate of how many, what percentage of the medical technology startups are within five, 50 miles from Stanford. But if it's not 50%, it's really close to 50%. So the majority of entrepreneurial activity in medical technology is within a 30 minute drive from here. Um, lots of these entrepreneurs have been connected with the course, uh, with our activities for the last five or six years. Whenever we would write something and we needed to validate it with an expert, that was very easy. Fire an email, people would respond right away. Driving to local companies to do case studies. We have about 40 or 50 case studies. We didn't need to travel for any of these case studies. Uh, the rare exceptions of case studies that we wrote that are outside Silicon Valley, again, it was very easy to do them remotely. But the bottom line, there is an amazing wealth of expertise in Silicon Valley. A lot of that connected to the university because many of the medical technology companies that we are featured in the book are companies that started from technology that was developed from the university. These are people who wanted to give back to the university. And they have been very generous with their time uh, to help us validate the process that we're developing, to point us to resources that we are not aware of, to provide material for case studies. Uh, one of the examples, uh, Bill Younger, who is a member of our, uh, I think, advisory board. Uh, he's, uh, he's a venture capitalist. He is the, in the board of directors of a medical device company. I wanted to develop an example of a financial model for a medical device company. I sent an email to Bill. Within 30 minutes, he responds. He says, yes, I'm going to put you in touch with the right people. Uh, I went and spent two days in the company finding out about the company, the technology, getting information about their financial projections, their financial model. It's a case study in the book. It took uh, a brief introduction at one meeting and a 30 minute interaction in an email to make that happen. Absolutely. And the, the book started as very US centric. But, and actually, the course material started as very US centric, but as we're going through that, we started gaining experience from markets outside the US, and those markets are becoming significantly, increasingly more important. Uh, we have case studies that talk about innovation in India. We have portions of the book that talk about regulatory and reimbursement challenges in Europe, uh, sales strategies in Europe, uh, sales strategies in China. We are featuring uh, a small startup that was started out of my old home country, Greece, that eventually expanded into uh, to the whole European market. So we have included global examples and global case studies in the book. We talk about differences between the US market and the global market. And we are hoping to inspire entrepreneurs both in the US but outside the US. Yes, uh, they told us it's heavy. Uh, it's big. <laughs> um, we actually received some very positive feedback. Uh, over the weekend, I got an email from Steve Osterley, who is uh, one of the senior executives at Medtronic, running the, uh, in charge of their technology development. Uh, Steve was uh, a person who encouraged us a lot in the process of writing the book. And he shared the book with some of his colleagues, and they came back to him saying that 
pretty much every executive at a company like Medtronic should have a copy of the book on their desk to refer to uh, when they are going through their own medical technology innovation. And uh, some of the people who reviewed the early versions of the book are Miles White, who is the chairman and CEO of Abbott. He's also a GSP alum. He had great things to say about the book. Uh, the founder of Boston Scientific uh, also reviewed the book, had great things to say about that. The CEO of Medtronic called the book the Grace Anatomy of Medical Technology Innovation. So we already got some great feedback. We had a party on Monday to celebrate the launch of the book. Uh, the people who are involved in the development of the book came to celebrate. Uh, and also a lot of young entrepreneurs from the Valley joined us at the party. And they were all saying that they are finding what is included in the book to be extremely helpful. Having that resource, they said, it's going to make a huge difference in, uh, in their journey.